morning and welcome to a proper piker's morning, a bit of mist there and uh, fancy catching a few today. Uh, the, the method I'm going to talk about today and show you today is probably the simplest method and probably one of the most successful, certainly one of my favourite methods and that is the simple ledger. And ledgering means that you're going to be flat down on the bottom, the lines down there, there's nothing protruding up, in, especially in clear water. I really rate the ledger. And nothing simpler, a lead, a, a wire trace and, and a bait. But at Pike Pro, we've developed a few things that might make it just that little bit more successful. Um, and that's what I want to show you today. So here it is, my ledger rig, which is almost probably my standard ledger rig now, which first of all, let's go right through it from top to bottom. Starting here is an up trace. Now, people think of up traces with the likes of Paternostad, uh, Paternostad live baits, etc. Uh, but uh, this is such an added advantage to have an up trace on a ledger because you think if you're down there amongst lilies, especially the early part of the season like this, you might even be amongst lilies or weed, that's going to help cut you through it. Absolutely great idea. You know, you don't need it. We do standard rigs without them. But to me, you know, it's one of those things, why not have one? You know, it's just an extra safeguard. This is all standard stuff off the shelf and all quality stuff. Quality swivel, 40 pound wire, Excellent wire. I've used this now for the last few years to make my traces up anyway when you want to make your own traces. This is something that I've made for years and now I don't bother because, you know, Pike Pro have bought them out. And they're the little stems. They do them in a long one and they do this as the mini one. I prefer the mini one uh, to, the, uh, to the long one, but it's, it's a, you know, your own preference. Uh, and what that does is it goes down and instead of going into the silt, and taking your line or your trace into the silt, that's stuck above, so you've got that nice free running rig when you get that pickup. And if you look at that, you can't get a, a ring bigger than that. You know, instead of like on a little swivel, I used to make them a little swivel, you need a little bit of weed on, and it wouldn't pass through. That'll pass through absolutely lovely. And of course, it goes over there, no problem. So if there was a crack off for any particular reason, that would be able to drop that anyway, no problem at all. Okay, down to the, the boom, which to my mind, you know, I use them on any rig now. I've used them for a few years now, these booms. It just makes sure that it separates the bait from the lead. It just makes sure that, you know, if you're going to sit there for hours on a big fish water especially, then you want to be sure, 100%, because let's get it right, if you're on a... 10% of a doubt there's a snag, uh, uh, sorry, a, a tangle. I guarantee that within 10 minutes you'll be thinking, I wonder if it was tangled, and you'll be bringing it in instead of sitting there for hours. If you think that it's, it's perfect, and this will make sure it's perfect, as you cast out, which you'll see me later, just make sure it separates. Watch it as it goes out, watch the lead go in, and watch this. If it comes down together, recast it. You just never know. But the boom should keep it away. That's all off the shelf a boom which presses you know if you just push it in that pushes onto the swivel just like that you see that and there it is perfect then onto the standard trace standard two hook treble trace 40 pound wire again why use 20 you know you can use 40 they're not if they're not going to pick up 40 they're probably not going to pick up 20 and if you're on 40 the chances are if you do hook a snag you'll probably bend the hooks you know before you break your rig so that's to my mind is a, a, a real safety thing for the pike that you're going to get the stuff back don't use light you know don't use light wire or light line you know one of the things for the safety is that you can get the gear back in even in a snag uh, a snag uh, a snag swim on there is two of our standard trebles Strong, strong trebles, not weak trebles, well tied. I use these standard now. I don't even make my own, I use them as standard. Then you've got the little bait flags on there. It's 
one with the barb on is the one that they put the flag on. And I was talking to Paul Garner and he was saying to me that, because I was interested that we do different colours. And some of those different colours, like green, you can see much better than even red. I think as predator anglers, we think red is like a bull, you know, red rag to the bull. Everybody wants to put red. And I think years ago when we used to use Vortex and, and some of the old Abu lures with the red tags on and the red, red wool, I think we still carried that on, especially in England. You know, or Britain, we still think that a red will attract them, and it, not necessarily. In fact, uh, Paul and myself were talking that probably green is probably one of the most successful colours to use for predators. And there it is. Bait's on there, ready to cast out. Beautiful rig. All off the shelf, dead easy to set up. All you've got to do is basically tie a knot on the swivel and you're ready to go. Let's cast this rig out. I'm only going to cast it a short distance because to my mind lots of times at this time of year there's fry there and the pike will be forcing the fish in close and I'm going to have a bait in close. When those pike come in close, there you go. On a lot of waters pressure will push them out but I'm just going to lob it out. The important thing is, and it's so important, is the rig has to be not tangled. I know that's dead dead easy and people say of course that's obvious but I see so many people with the rig going I'm thinking god blimey there's a chance that that's snagged so here we go I'm just going to make sure that the bait lands separated from the lead okay nice and easy nice gentle lob I'm watching the bait there it goes did you see that separated I'm confident that that'll fall down now onto the bottom without a tangle at all. And I can sit there now for absolutely hours, knowing full well that that is not tangled. Okay. There we go. I'm confident, everything's fine, no tangles, sit there and have a nice cup of coffee. If you sling it out and you just think within your mind, just a few percentage, mm, I wonder if that was tangled. As you sit there, you'll just keep worrying, I wonder if that was tangled, I wonder. You're not settled, you're not confident, you'll reel it in when you could be reeling, to my mind, you could be reeling it in. Just as a pike's going to grab it, you've reeled it in. You're only going to catch it when it's in the water and you've got to be confident at all times through the day, your rig is not tangled. There you go. Not a monstrous fish by a long, long way. The fish that we're after could probably eat that, but they're all pike, they all need to be looked after. And uh, a beautiful little fish. You never know, one day it might be one of the fish that makes a dream for somebody. Let's put him back. A lovely autumn caught fish on the ledger rig. Let's put him back. What I'd like to do now is just talk about the basic gear that I use um, for, for pike fishing. and. To be honest, and a lot of people don't understand this, is why we use such absolutely monstrous gear for a pike. Don't, don't get me wrong, there's some pike, you know, fight really, really well. But compared to other species, they're not the greatest fighters in the world. So why would you use such heavy gear? Well, the thing you want to do is, because you're using wire, you know, mono doesn't go, doesn't sit that well with, with wire. If you get a tangle, you can, you, you know, you can lose it on a, on a tangle, you can lose it against the wire onto the, onto the nylon. But what, what are the other things that is the main thing? Everything has to be stepped up in that if you hook the bottom or you hook a snag, you want to be able to get out of it. Because remember, on a lot of the rigs I use, you're going to be leaving two treble hooks out in the swim, which is not good for a pike. If you crack off or break off on a snag, the chances are a pike might pick that up at a later date and, and it's not that good. But 
if you're using like from Pike Pro, we've got 45 and 65 pound braid. You can actually bend the hooks. I've fished the, the, the river wire and hooked the bottom and I've had sort of the 60 pound braid. You wind into it, you pump like hell and you bend the hooks and outcome. Okay, your trace is, your trace is rubbish, but does it matter? You've saved a pike, you know, and that's it. I use very powerful rods because if you want to exert that much pressure, then you want a, a powerful rod. I use three pound test curve rods minimum because the bait you're casting, people say, well, you know, why do you need a three pound, a three and a half pound test curve rod to play a pike? Well, at the end of the day, you want a, a rod, I want to pick up a rod that'll cast a, a four ounce, six ounce smelt, but I want something that'll cast out a pound mackerel. And, and I want to be able to whack it a fair distance. So that's, you know, I don't want to buy five rods for pike fishing just for dead baiting. So that's what I'm using, a three, three and a half pound test curve rod. I'm using heavy braid for that very reason of that I want to hook, if I hook the bottom, and let's face it, if you're fishing the river especially, you're going to hook the bottom and you're going to lose tattle if you've not got uh, very, very strong gear. And the nice thing about braid is you've got 45 pound, 65 pound braid, and it's only half the diameter of, of, of your mono and it's going to bend those hooks and you're going to get the gear back. And to be honest, you know, one of the nice things about me is I enjoy the fight of a fish, but to be honest, the fight of a fish is when you get your rod into full bend. You know, there's nothing worse than seeing people on light line playing a pike, especially at this time of year when the, the temperature's still only 10 degrees, nine degrees, and they're playing the fish for half an hour, 20 minutes. There should be no need for that. You should get the, you hook the pike, you play quickly, you get it in and you return it. Great. No half an hour, one hour playing on, you know, sort of, I hear people using 10 pound line, eight pound line. It's just not fair on the fish. So that's why I use this heavy gear. There you go. Another small pike, thin pike, very typical of when it's been a warm summer and they've not been eating. Uh, pike do suffer with the heat and they've not, eating that much and they, they look thin like this, but they'll soon catch up. Lovely little fish. Let's call it a day. I'm gonna pull up for a pint on the way home and I've enjoyed that. Relative to the size, it's lovely to see that indicator come off. I hope we've proved that the method works. Let's put it back.